Hello everyone, so for today's video I want to talk about a specific yet short scene from the Crimes of Grindelwald movie. Look, we all have our own opinions on this movie and you can say what you like, but there were some decent enjoyable moments and then there was moments where you think, well, did that really just happen? happen. One of those scenes is in the beginning of the movie where Grindelwald and his followers are looking for accommodation in Paris as he will be speaking at a rally of his. He chooses the home he wants to stay in, his followers enter without permission and kill the tenants or homeowners. This was quite surprising as I was led to believe that Grindelwald didn't want unnecessary bloodshed, unnecessary death until I realised, oh wait it's muggles, he doesn't care about their well-being, only that of magical food. Folk. He wanted to enslave the Mughal race, but I actually didn't know he thought so little of them. Not too far off from Voldemort's views on these non magique despite what he says later in his speech. I believe it was one of the first few things we learned about Gellert's personality. Anyway, I'm thinking, okay, you know what? He's the antagonist. He's doing what has to be done. He needs a place to stay, and this is his way of making a statement to his own followers about what's to come. Something he wanted to filter out was not those who would betray him, but those who were hesitant, undecided on if they would really go through with what was required of them. He has the home checked out to make sure that nobody else was there and surprisingly comes across an infant boy sitting alone in what appears to be a nursery. Gellert approaches the child and stares at him while the child returns his own look at the dark wizard. Gellert looks as if he's in thought about the whole situation and what it means to have this child here. He rises to his feet and walks out of the room. We see a green light clearly from someone's wand illuminate the entire room as Gellert seems to have another brief pause before walking away as the scene cuts. Now I've seen some dark moments in the Potter movies, Cedric Diggory for example getting killed in the graveyard for simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time, or the heartbreaking scene of Remus Lupin and Nymphadora Tonks when they're laid out beside each other having lost their lives with their hands just about touching, even Sirius Black killed by his own cousin Bellatrix Lestrange which resulted in Harry losing what was left of his family, Snape having to kill Dumbledore in order to secure Voldemort's trust, or how about Charity Burbage when she was painfully suspended above the Malfoy dining table after what I can only assume was her being horrifically tortured. She pleads with Snape for help before she's murdered by Voldemort with everyone witnessing the act. We know what the green light means guys, it's only been associated with one curse and that is the killing curse. It can be spoken as an incantation or also done non-verbally which means that little boy was murdered by one of Grindelwald's associates. As I said, criticise this movie all you like for its poor structure but for me it is the darkest moment in the whole combined Potter and Beast series and I'm going to tell you why that boy was killed and it starts with a phrase that you're all too familiar with. Before today's video continues, I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about today's sponsor, Audible. When it comes to sponsors, I never recommend anything I don't believe would be beneficial for you all. And since my entire YouTube channel is based on a book series, you're probably starting to see why I'm so happy to once again partner up with such an awesome company. Guys, I have used Audible for years and could not be happier to recommend this app. Many of you are currently aware I've got a second vampire based channel and I am currently Currently immersing myself in vampire novels, so my chosen audiobook at the moment is Blood and Gold by Anne Rice, which comes after my last audiobook, The Vampire Armand. It's amazing to hear both Marius and Armand's different takes on the same situation when they crossed paths. With that being said, guys, it isn't just audiobooks. The Audible app has podcasts, wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you will not find anywhere else. It is everything you love to listen to all in one app. You have a playlist for life. Trust me guys, there will be no regrets if you take my advice and choose to download this app. Audible are so confident that you'll find something you love that they want to give you an incredible deal today. Audible wants you to have 30 days free on them. Try it out. See how you feel. There's nothing to lose and only listening convenience to gain. To avail of your offer, you can click the link in the description 
below or go to your web browser and type in audible.com forward slash HP folklore. That's audible.com forward slash HP folklore or simply text HP folklore to 500 500. Three quick different ways to get your trial now. Let me know what audiobook you choose in the comment section below the greater good. This phrase was coined by Albus Dumbledore and Gellard as a means of justifying every inhumane act that needed to be done in order to ensure that there was no threat whatsoever to their cause being successful. Let's look at Grindelwald's situation at this point in time. He was on the run, he escaped from incarceration and was a wanted, convicted criminal. Every single aura is on the hunt for him and anyone who's affiliated with him. He and his associates have just taken possession of some unknown muggle's home in Paris and killed the owners who are also parents to an infant. He realises that this young boy is absolutely 100% helpless and defensive. He knows that this infant is also an orphan as he just killed his parents. He can't keep the boy here in the home. It's not his responsibility to care for the child, nor does he want to. He can't drop the boy off somewhere in a neighbouring home. I'm sure the child is recognisable as people may have known the parents. He knows that this child is a massive hindrance being in this home. When Grindelwald enters the room and sees the child, he he knows immediately what has to be done. He may not like it, but he knows that nothing, not even the smallest problem, can interfere with his vision and goal to create a better world for the magical people. Killing this child is the most practical and sympathetic way, in his eyes, to make this issue go away. It is a needless casualty but a necessary one. Grindelwald, in his own deranged way of thinking, was performing a justifiable act. Well, he wasn't the one doing it, but his followers knew what needed to be done just by a glance or a look. You'll also notice it was done without any hesitation by the witch who remained in the room. She, like all of her fellow Grindelwald followers, were fixated on performing their duties for the greater good. That was the crucial terminology that everyone needed to live by. Achieving what they wanted to achieve would not come easy. As I said a few moments ago, Grindelwald was in thought when he looked at that that little boy. His mind was already made up. He probably didn't like what was about to happen, which is why he didn't perform the killing curse himself. The follow-up scene of him pausing after he leaves conveys that he really must move forward. It also shows his lack of compassion for muggles in general, regardless of age, which makes me wonder what his approach would be if the child was actually magical. Would he have him disposed of so quickly and what seems to be so heartlessly? I don't believe so. Something that I think is important to know about Gellard is that he hates hesitation and he hates being unsure. He knows that in every situation a decision must be made, whether it's a simple one like sending someone to deliver his message or to end the life of a child no more than what seems to be a couple of months old. He was even prepared to kill Dumbledore to ensure that he could not be stopped. Regardless of the blood pact, Dumbledore could have still been very effective in his efforts to stop his former friend. Sure, Gellert actually trained Credence to kill Dumbledore, something he genuinely believed would happen. There was also another explanation as to why Grindelwald looked so emotionless moments before the little boy's murder, and that's because he foreseen it. He was a seer, remember? He could see snippets of the future and how things would pan out. It's entirely possible he's seen this little child's death when using his gift of foresight. You could even say that this is what why Grindelwald, of all people, was not surprised. He knew that the path he was on was the direct result of straightforward decisions and that any hesitation or veering off course in relation to this infant could have had adverse effects on the outcome of the future he had foreseen. It's one of those moments that gives a very strong indication that this movie or this story is about to become very dark. I mentioned Cedric Diggory's death earlier and this was the first death of an innocent wizard in the whole series and it kickstarted what appeared to be a chain reaction in more people dying as the books went on, as Voldemort returned to power. We then see the death of Lita Lestrange in the Protego Diabolica spell later on too, so it does make sense if you think of it. Anyway guys, that's my take on why Gellert Grindelwald killed the little boy in the Crimes of Grindelwald movie. I must admit it was a little uncomfortable making this video thinking about a life that young being taken.
taken, even if it is fiction. Anyway, I'd like to know if you have anything to add yourself in the comment section as to why you think this happened. I really appreciate you all watching today's vid. Thanks again, and I'll see you all very soon.